All right, folks. This is Stephen Hagen, and we are at St. Lotus 13. Um, so, Patrick, um, one, of the, one of the downsides of... One of the things we do at St. Lotus is we're always trying to bring in new blood. We love this format, and we want to bring in new blood. But a lot of times... Um, it's not always the best time for some people. Some people don't necessarily love the format in the same way. Some people love it in a more casual setting, but not necessarily don't have as good of a time. Or sometimes you just get a bad start and you have to beat. Uh, Patrick uh, was 0-4, was not having a great time, and really just didn't want to stay. And so Mark is going to finish out his games rather than just giving people free wins. Uh, so this is Patrick's deck, Patrick's draft deck being played by Mark. Uh, versus Adam at two and one, right? So let me get these lists up while we're talking here, and they are good to go. So Adam Varner, uh, local grinder and cube specialist, has um, his artifact list, which is sitting at two and one currently, and then. Patrick's list was a kind of Jeskai tokens monastery mentor list um, with lots of removal and like a broad token strategy. So, and these are what we have. So, did not see who won the roll. Uh, I'm flying solo on this one. Uh, Peter has headed out for the night, and Mark obviously has jumped in. Mark does the thing that we like to do, a uh, nice thing, and shows hand. We see a ponder. It looks like a loose focus. I imagine he throws that one back, uh, but we shall see. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe with the ponder. There's no fetch after the ponder, but you could get a shovel. Maybe with the ponder you keep it, but that seems like a throwback in that list. Um, I would have thrown it back, but they, he is not. He is keeping it. He says, whatever, this ain't my deck anyway, so. All right, so and that last match we watched was a, a slobber knocker between the blue red Kiki list and the Thassa's Oracle reanimate list. So it was uh, quite a good one. And if you're watching these in the order we record them. All right, okay, we had a mole here. Um, it's always interesting going solo here. There might be more a bit of moles of lulls of silence as I, you know, balance things like taking a drink or chewing a slice of pizza. Or, uh, I was messaging the Discord there, so I will do my best to keep myself talking. I, I do like to hear my own voice. It is lovely and dulcet. And I enjoy it myself. Uh, all right, we got planes. No, we have a snow-covered planes to start. Right, these are one of our special, not really a snow-covered, but snow-covered. Uh, oh, crip LED. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, so much stuff here. And I think, yeah, we're going to follow it by a balance, right? We're going to pop the LED just for popping the LED's sake. <laughs> Got no lands. So that is a heck of an art. And we're going to move a Lutri to our hand with that mana, I assume. So, No, actually, we were able to cast a Lutri off, that, off the LED mana. Oh, that was some hot magic from Adam Varner. Oh, my God. The turn one balance play a Lutri uh, is just sick. Wow, like no hand. Uh, Mark has no hand whatsoever because of it. I, that is just, dang, some heck of some magic, man. Like, obviously this deck has struggled today. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's a you know, strictly the deck. You know, sometimes just bad matchups happen. But 
there's not many people going to recover from a play like that, right? Like, you're just, what are you going to do against that? You're like, I have no hand at the end of turn one, and you have a 3-2 booter and uh, a bunch of mana. But notice that Adam is at nine because he's taking mana crypt damage, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, he's taking some vault damage. But the clock's just got moved up. We're going to draw some cards off Thought Monitor. So now we're on a two-turn clock. Uh, there's no way Adam can lose this, you know, virtually unless we get uh, some kind of amazing blocker here. And that's not going to happen with double white uh, when we're looking at, looks like a Stitcher Poppet and a uh, an Iconoclast in hand. So that double white's not going to get very far. We're going to take him down to three. Uh, pop the wonders of the Natter Day. And we're going to cast the Battle Skull just for uh, make sure we're finishing this up the right way, right? So uh, Dr. PP Poo Poo MD picks up on screen as he should be. He is a germ. He carries the skull to the victory. But that victory is on the back of one of the sickest balance plays I've ever seen. So hands down, uh, that makes me want to cry. That's a punch your mama play. Um, that is VRD magic for you right there. And we've got a uh, left win on that one. So we're going to check out the board. See what we got here. Uh, got a reality chip. Got Oh, is that Skyclave in the board? Oh, man. Yeah, that's... We're going to bring in a lot of cards. We're just going to bring in some cards. So interestingly, in this draft, uh, you know, Adam went for the Batter Skull and the, uh, his targets for his Stone Forge are the Batter Skull, the Sword of the Meek, and that is it, right? Like, he's got the battle skull and the sword. He left the clamp and the board. Um, he's got those two. Uh, and he's got the stone forge for it. But left the... He said, you know, maybe it was because he lost the... Th uh, maybe it was because he lost the um, Talarian Academy. He decided to leave the... Uh, uh, called a complete off in uh, no man's land. Called a complete went undrafted. Also of note, only he has one bobble, uh, but he was really the only artifact deck, and it was the only artifact deck. Uh, only one of the bobbles got drafted and got drafted really, really late. So uh, a couple interesting things that happen there, where we see cards that normally go uh, significantly higher uh, go undrafted, and, and that always is going to happen in any given VRD, right? It, it's always an interesting factor, but. Uh, in this one, it was I think there was a couple decks that could have utilized the Calder Complete pretty well, so I think that's kind of an interesting uh, check on that. That because the blue green deck that has the Talarian Academy, I think also could have and Tinker uh, could have used the Calder pretty pretty effectively. I think Mark's still figuring out the board. You know, no, this is his first first game with this deck. Um, did not draft it, and he, he's jumping in. Uh, Patrick headed out. Uh, was not having was not having what he needed on it on the day and was just not in a good place um, so he took off for the day and we are um, you know not our favorite thing in the world but you know um, we're gonna fill in on this and we appreciate Patrick coming out and doing the draft at all and um, hope he had some something of a good time I don't know has no we have not uh, okay so these are I think these are a little out of date at this point um, yeah these are out of date these have not been updated because Matt is three and two um, but at one point Josh was sitting at three and one with the green and blue deck that I was not loving on but uh, <laughs> You know, I don't know Josh, but I've been told he's a heck of a player, and sometimes that's all that matters. So, uh, Dan is now two and one. I'm not sure where Alex is. Kevin was two and one at one point. So, uh, waiting for those to get updated. But we are, uh, you know, pretty good race at this point. 
Um, Swifty, uh, this says one and two, but online he said he was two and one, so I'm not sure what's going on there, um, and we'll check into that. Well, we are shuffling up. I'm going to go fix that mat real quick. Uh, so just one moment, and I'll be right back. All right, and sorry for the pause there. As I said, we are operating a little bit bare bones, so uh, normally I would have had someone be able to run out there. So, yes, yeah, Swifty is 2-1, and one, not 1-2, and two, so we're going to have to fix the online standings there. Uh, they're still in sideboarding, still figuring this out, but um, we are extending the grace of the world. So this has been our interesting BRD, right? We had a lot of new blood. Uh, hopefully some of them are having a really good time and want to come back. We always like to get new people to cycle in. Uh, we had very few people that are regulars. Uh, we didn't have any of our, our super regulars like Cody or Brandon. Uh, they had work or personal things that they were tending to. Uh, but New Blood is great for the format. And hopefully some of them make a shift to do some online stuff and uh, keep this little niche that we have carved out between us and uh, Discord. Keep that little niche going. It's a, it's a fun place to be to play some VRD. The Discord currently is in kind of its normal uh, winter lull where, you know, people are busy and games don't go as fast. But oftentimes when we have one of these, that kind of sparks, uh, sparks a little bit and that lull kind of goes away. If, you know, depending on what kind of bug Mark gets, for example, Mark said he may end up jumping in an online one and he hasn't done that for a while. And, uh, uh, you know, people want to play Mark. So that's always a interesting hope that him jumping on will get other people to jump on because they're like, oh, I want to play Mark. Mark's cool. He's not really cool. He's, he's, kind, of a, he's kind of a sucker, but, you know, he, he's one of my best friends, so I'll deal with him. I, I cope. That's what we do. All right, we've got some action. Enough vamping from me. I'm over here looking like Edwin Cullen. Um, let's, let's play out our sleeves here. we got... Multiple piles, or three, two, two, or three, four. Let's see how this looks. This hand looks much better for Mark than the last hand did, that I thought was sketchy and he probably shouldn't have kept. Or no, or does it? Is there a second land in that hand? I can't tell. I see an island. He looks like he's keeping it, so either he's in I don't care mode or there is a second land in there. Uh, Adam, on the other hand, is going to throw that back. I saw a Monastery Mentor, a Looter Scooter, a Counter Spell. Still cannot see if there's a second land. That might have been a hit, a pathway, which would be pretty good for him, but. Looks like we are resolving our mulligan on Adam's side. We don't need this Kiki anymore. He's not in this party. So let's bring up my homeboy, my favorite. Good old Urza, Lord High Artificer. Urza has been drafted many times. I think I've drafted him 10 times myself, at least. Um, and that's just in VRDs. That doesn't include LRDs and MRDs. Um, card, you know, performs... Uh, I was discussing earlier in the draft that I think Urza is an interesting card as sometimes it leads to traps in that 
there's so much good stuff that you can do with Urza that sometimes you end up drafting, wanting to get all of the extra little things you can do and watering down your deck because you're over reliant on getting Urza then. Um, so it's you know, uh, but I think this Urza list looks pretty solid. Um, I think the support is there, and I don't think Mark has a second land. So no, that is a pathway. Is it a pathway or a mentor? I can't tell. Um, all right, we got an ancient tomb. We're gonna throw that out. We're gonna throw a ballista for one. Phyrexian ballista. And yeah, no, Mark did not have a second land, but he does have what? Oh, he's got. Oh, Ion Cyclone. So in effect, he did have a second land. Lorien revealed there. So, and he's gonna go to try him on that. And this is why that card's good. Um, I probably maybe would have done that first time, but I guess the other was um, it's an interesting choice. Well, now it's interesting, right? Because he's got a counterspell in hand, he's got a Dovin's Veto in hand, um, he's got a Monastery Mentor. I'm gonna hit for one. can't do any balance shenanigans unless we drop like an LED or something. And that was obviously very brutal in the first game. Uh, so we're going to look at a random card. Reveal card three. We're going to see the true name Nemesis. True name says, hey Ballista, I don't care about you. Adam's going to get to draw another card. <coughs> this is plodding along. And there we go. Now we're going to get some forward motion finally. So, uh, Looks like a planes potentially on that draw there. Or a reprieve, maybe. I can't tell. There's definitely a reprieve in the hand, so he's just going to pass the turn. Count seven, pass the turn. Um, LED. Planes. We're going to cast a balance here, I assume? Nope, we're going to cast a stone forge. And I think that one probably needs to get countered. Yep. We're going to do old fizzle fingers there. And that gets met by a metallic rebuke, which is why he tapped the LED there. Um, so that gets rebuked, and he's going to go look for seemingly a batter skull. Mark shortcutting over, saying, all right, you tap me, I go down one. Um, here's our third land. Stone, unless you got a way to kill that stone forge, that battle skull is going to become a threat pretty swiftly. Um, Thoptercopter don't seem to do much, but Mentor will we'll get us rolling. We'll try to get some action going here. Gonna play an act of opal. Play a city of traitors, so we got lots of mana. Gonna cheat out a batter skull. Brandon's gonna carry that skull on his back. We're gonna tap for four. Go to fourteen. Roll him up. Tap for one. Pop that. Roll him up again. And we're going to kill the Mentor in a swing for one. Nice play on Adam's part there. He only had one card in hand, so no need to keep the LED around. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this thing that 
probably not going to do too much, but it is a potential threat. Um, and this is, you know, not looking good for Patrick's deck here in the hands of Mark. You know, now note Adam doesn't have any cards in hand, but it's just chugging along at this point. And while protection for everything, you know, protection from your opponent is relevant, Trample kind of laughs that a little bit, and it's just going to block one of that damage because of the interactive ways that protection and Trample play together. So, so he can assign what would be lethal damage to the uh, True Name Nemesis, which is one, and then the rest will Trample over each time. So it will not act as a, just a soaking shield. But he did not decide to attack, uh, interestingly enough. Um, he decided against the attack, which seems odd. Oh, so we got a stifle. Um, so this card is new. Uh, what is this? Came in out of the board. It is... Shauna's Tide Binder. Okay, well, it's not coming up on there, so because it's too new. All right, so basically, this stifles an activator triggered ability. If it's an artifact creature or planeswalker, kind of this way, the permanent loses all abilities for as long as Tishana's is on the battlefield. So as long as this three-two Merfolk is on the battlefield, uh, the walking ballista cannot activate its abilities. So it's interesting, right? I, I I wonder if Adam does not... Adam's a talented enough and experienced enough player that he should probably know how Batter Skull and uh, Trample... Or am I just wrong and Batter Skull doesn't have Trample and I've just forgotten? Oh, that's what it is. Batter Skull just doesn't have Trample and I've just forgotten. I'm an idiot. Not Adam. Adam's a better player than I am. That makes more sense. I thought the Skull had Trample. So that will act as a blocker for the Batter Skull for quite some time. Um, I was wondering why he wasn't attacking. And the reason was because it actually doesn't have Trample. All right, that is a portable hole. Which my guess, so portable hole gets something three and less, two or less. So it cannot get the Tide Binder. Right. Um, so it can't get the Tide Binder, so it's going to take away the Thopter Copter, the, the Looter Scooter. All right, so we got a Monolith. So Mark's making them work for it. We have a Reprieve, a Dovin's Veto, a Skyclave Apparition, and an Unknown card. What is that? I can't... Oh, a Defabricate is the next card. So, um, seems good. So this is the fourth card in his hand that he fabricate counter target artifact enchantment or counter target activated. So it's another stifle. Um, so we're not getting any aggression going here for sure. Uh, but it, we are holding off for the time being. Not sure. Where did the Grim Monolith go? Oh, it got defabricated. Okay, that makes sense. It's lost on what happened to the Monolith there. So we got rid. We defabricated the Monolith. We're just gonna try to stop any infinity shenanigans. 
We've got a Mystic Sanctuary. We have enough islands, so we're just going to buy back um, Lorian Revealed. Uh, I guess the assumption is we're going to want to draw some cards with that thing. Uh, Lorian Revealed is a sorcery, not an instant, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but... Ancient Den, and a pass. So True Name's carrying a load here, right? He's doing some work. He's just like, uh, I'm going to hold this off as long as I can. I don't know if I buy back the Lorian Revealed there or if I buy back, back to the Fabricate. I think I buy back to the Fabricate. I think it's more versatile. You want to hold up the counter mana. So throwing down the True Name, or th throwing down a five mana Lorian Revealed is probably not going to cut it. <clears throat> um, yeah, so you're going to pass the turn. I guess if he wants another land, but that seems okay. I think the Defabricate was probably the better buyback. Um, all right, so we've got a lot of mana here. Does Adam, I mean, the Tidebinder, Tidebinder, yeah, Tidebinder is definitely holding off here. Adam's got swords of plowshares in his deck that can deal with it. Uh, that's really the biggest deal, only real way he has to deal with the Tidebinder, depending on what he brought in. Like, if he brought in Teferi, uh, that can deal with it. Fractured Identity, things like that. So, depending on what he brought in out of his board, um, he can try in a variety of ways... Uh, so this is a problem. He's like, hey, I don't want to deal, not with Urza necessarily himself, but with the token, right? So the token is going to be the real problem. So we're going to reprieve it and draw a card. Uh, buy ourselves some time. And we're going to go get another land. So effectively, he turns the Mystic Sanctuary into a... Uh, Rampant growth, like, not growth, but uh, one of them that goes gets the land to the hand. Um, far seek, turn the mystic sanctuary into a far seek, basically. Which there's nothing wrong with that, you know. This matchup's going to be come down to very land dependent at this point. Um, now, so the question becomes: While currently Adam cannot break through, does Mark have anything that can really break through this as well? Right, like uh, Murktide Regent uh, obviously could. A virtue of loyalty could start pumping things much bigger and could kind of start a, an interesting race. Uh, solitude could get rid of something, but that's then start beating over. Uh, but, you know, there's a question back of, well, what are the threats that Mark can produce that we can deal with? So, again, um, Mark is filling in for Patrick in this matchup. I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, I don't have to keep saying it again and again. I'm used to live coverage, but we're doing different coverage for the matches this time, not live coverage. Let us know how you think about it and what you think. We're trying something different out. And obviously it, it helped out this time because um, we're short on staff, so... So Mark has to keep the true name back, basically. He, he cannot win a race with the Batter Skull. Um, you know, if he can deal with the Batter Skull in some way, he could do it. Uh, but, you know, that is not a race that he can win. Uh, oh, the One Ring was in the board. Interesting. We got that quick and early One Ring and ended up putting it in the board. That's got a smart for Adam, who... Obviously, would have loved the one ring in this deck. It would have been particularly good. All right, so we're going to go for Urza again. And we're going to lose focus. I think that's what that is. Yeah, we're going to lose focus, replicating uh, twice. So he has to pay a substantial amount of mana for that. and is unable to pay said mana, and Urza goes to the yard. What an interesting matchup we have here at this point. 
as we both just kind of stalemate into oblivion. Mark cannot get aggressive. Mark Patrick cannot get aggressive with the true name into the batter skull because the life gain, uh, that race will be lost. And in the same, the batter skull can't really come in because the true name can keep it at bay all day. Because unlike my idiot brain earlier said, batter skull does not have trample. Uh, call to complete would be really good here. Uh, so back to my earlier take on uh, call to complete. All right, so we're going to skyclave away the portable hole, getting uh, the scooter back, the smuggler's copter back. Uh, it just came into play, so it cannot attack this turn, but that's going to give us a flying threat that can start to try to deal with uh, this problem. So we have a key. A key. Uh, I'm going to use that key to untap. Oh, to make the batter skull unblockable. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So I think Mark makes a mistake there, right? So Mark has the Dovin's Veto. He could have countered the key, but I think he decides he's going to hold it for the vault. Uh, for getting the unblockable component right. And the unblockable component uh, obviously is going to swing this game in another direction. Um, you know, the unblockable batter skull um, is quite a quite a little beastie there. And changes... Oh, no. See the Doe and Vito. Uh, see the mistakes that were made. Changes the component of this game significantly. Uh, in hand, we have a Domin Vito. We have an Ajano. Uh, and I don't know what the third card is. Mark's a flicker. He's a flicker. He's a flicker. Uh, is that Winds of Abandon? I can't tell the third card. We're going to swing with a Looter Scooter. We're going to draw, and we're going to discard. Oh, that is a council's judgment. One of them is there. Mark tanks for a minute. He's going to pitch the card that I don't know what it is, I think. It's either that or the Ajano. He's... Making the decision here. <laughs> oh, unexpectedly absent is the other card. So that's actually pretty relevant because um, it can bury the batter skull. So I, I, I am keeping that if... Because the problem with getting rid of the germ is that you just... It doesn't do... You can just reattach it to something else, etc. Uh, but he can bury the batter skull relatively deep, man. Uh, and it looks like he's going to do that now. So... And he's going to try to counsel his judgment, which also exiles the batter skull. Um, yeah. So we're, and he's going to return the batter skull to hand in response. So that's going to buy him some time. Uh, the Dovin's Veto doesn't help this, though, because he can simply uh, Stoneforge back in and get around the Veto. So, ah, but he can name the Stoneforge. Ah, so Mark, good player here. Um, the Council of Judgment does not choose when you're casting it, choose when you resolve it. In response to the cast, he returns the Batter Skull. So Mark simply chooses the Stoneforge. That now puts the Dovin's Veto online um, to counter uh, the Batter Skull. And Mark puts himself in a pretty good position um, playing his ass off on this one, man. So we're going to tap some mana. We're going to replay a Batter Skull. And we're going to Windmill Slam a Dovin's Veto. And deal with that garbage. Mark says, boo to the yah. 
So the Tide Binder is still holding off the Ballista. This game would be over uh, easily, probably at this point, with not for that. Um, there is the Swords to Plowshares in the deck. That's the really only answer that um, has. So you know, depending on what Mark does, uh, counterspell wise, um, he so we're just going to pitch an island. So our hand is unexpectedly absent and an unknown card. And I'm guessing based off what's happening here, this unknown card is a treasure cruise, which is in this deck. Which seems pretty good. So we're gonna exile some garbage. Things we're not buying back. We got no snapcaster action, we've got nothing. We're going to go cruising for some treasure. Gonna pull three into our hand. Looks like a sacred foundry. And stuff. Which I'm not quite sure what it is. And Adam's just going to pull this up. He's like, alright. At this point... You've got too many cards, and Mark pulls off a heck of a win, man. Like, like Mark uh, playing his little booty off and pulls the X in, uh, playing Patrick's deck. Wow. We're going to go to game three. Adam hits the board and says, uh, let's see what I got here, because... Uh, now, again, that was... I don't necessarily think that's indicative of the match, but uh, it was a heck of a play there, right? So Mark's looking at the board, seeing what he pulled out. He's got this Winds of Abandon. Um, he's thinking about bringing it back in. The card's bad. Don't bring it back in, Mark. Um, so he's thinking about bringing that back in. He's thinking about looking at what he does. He's got the Twister. He's got the Dress Down. He's, he's interested in Dress Down, though. He's like, he's got enough combo with stuff. Uh, he's like, I'm going to... I'm going to run with that. Man, it is early December. It is the Christmas season. The semester is almost over. And we are playing BRD. What better world could we be in? Well, there's lots of better worlds we can be in. But, you know, it is what it is. So... Adam versus Mark playing in lieu of Patrick, who took off for the day. We are one and one. Uh, it's going to be in a pretty interesting spot here. So Mark played, you know, I had some good good luck on his side. Uh, the Tide Binder was particularly well timed. But outside of that, I Mark played just a heck of a game of Magic right there, and. Uh, you know, pulled that win off on a matchup that, you know, probably doesn't feel that good very otherwise. Uh, had a whole lot of counter spells. Use the counter spells effectively. But uh, Tide Binder, absolute all star there, right? I mean, that was just crazy good. <coughs> Countered putting a, uh, stifled putting a counter onto the Ballista. And then was able to completely uh, shut down the ballista for the rest of the game and make it absolutely unusable, right? So, just a heck of a play there. Oh, man. This is hard when we're doing this by ourselves. Oh, my God. Like, I like to hear myself talk, but... Damn. All right, folks. Uh, so, we got... Pulling our cards. We're setting our lives to 20. Making a list. We're checking it twice. We're going to find out who's naughty and nice. Unexpected ab unexpectedly absent is coming to town. Um, all right, so we got some lands. We got a looter. He says no on that one, right? So and that's interesting because he, he kept what I thought were pretty sketchy hands the first time. But uh, the second one obviously panned out, right? Like he kept a one land with Lorien Revealed. Uh, but uh, Lorien Revealed's a good card, and it got there. Looks like 
oh, obviously, if, if Mark has already auto, uh, uh, mulliganed, then Adam kept his, right, because of the way that our order of operation works and how we decide that we're going to keep and how this game works. I would pull up our standings in lieu here, but I don't think they've been updated. They have not, so those are still out of date, so we can't discuss that in the meantime. I can hear Mark hard shuffling to the door. Um, our, our normal uh, world of Carly Rae is not, seems to be playing in the other room. It seems to have disappeared for right now. I see a council's judgment. I see some lands, including a mystic sanctuary. I see a Dovin's veto. Uh, po a monastery mentor unexpectedly absent. This hand doesn't look amazing, but he's like, all right, cool, we're going to do this thing. Um, and we've got land. We've got crypt. We've got a ballista for one. This looks familiar. We're going to play a mystic sanctuary tapped. Play a pearl. And we're going to pass the turn. Let's see what some crypt damage does. Odds. So he's an even Stevens player. I'm a made the odds be in your favor always player. Um, but my luck's pretty miserable on crypt rolls, so. Especially in 40 card formats. Oh, we've got crypt into uh, City of Traders. That's a lot of mana. We're going to drop down a batter skull. This looks all too familiar from the last game. Um, nothing to do. Last time it was a stone forge. This time it's just straight up a skull. But we may also have the same thing coming to town to stop this party. We have a true name, a council's judgment, or Dovin's veto. True name comes out of party, naming Adam. And then again, this is a familiar dance. If we can get a tide bender out here, then this is going to make it uh, quite the shenanigan. Even Stevens, we're good to go. We're going to tap for two. It soon means that we're going to be playing a land shortly after that. Right, we got four. We got five. And we've got some um, affinity. So we are going to draw some cards with a thought monitor. And uh, that thought monitor could be... Uh, could be quite a threat. Urza Saga comes in and gets rid of that and uh, gets a counter. And oh, this is a really strong start for Adam. What are we going to do? So we've got white, blue, blue. That doesn't allow us to cast the Council's Judgment. What are the unexpectedly absent, to be honest? Man, it could be a bit of a pain here. So looking back at the draft, what do we have to start with? So we had the Pearl into the Time Twister, but the Time Twister just didn't really end up doing that much there. Um, we had the Soul Ring, the Emerald, the White Plume. So, you know, I think this deck, uh, the Twister is very alluring, obviously, but... I think this deck goes a different direction and uh, you know we end up with something very different and uh, the draft changes up. So I think that Time Twister really sets the tone for the whole draft and uh, in the end sets the tone for this deck as well that it just didn't really have uh, a set feel to it. It was just kind of missing something. All right, so... Mm, pardon me. Uh, that is an opt. So he is scrying. 
deciding does he want this land? And I'm guessing he does. I mean, because he's got a council's judgment. He's got an unexpected lands. And, like, the second white seems really crucial. So, he's going to go ahead and... He's in the tank. He's going to draw it. Yeah. And that was the right call. I mean, he needed to do that. Because he can now play it. Um, shock himself. And council judgment the thought monitor right because the issue here is he's got a enough mana to equip the batter skull to the thought monitor and just go to town and true name can't do anything about that so I think he has to do the councils on the thought monitor right like if you don't then you're just in trouble he does have the absent in his hand so he can do some instant speed so Ursus goes up to three So is he going to make another Urza token uh, before he goes? Is he going to float a mana? Um, I think if I'm Adam, I make an Urza token here. and Those are going to get pretty big and just kind of create uh, an untenable beat down at this point, right? Like, Mark's reading this saga, trying to figure out what's going on. Oh. Yeah, makes an Urza token. I don't think Mark gets out from behind this one. If he brought back in the winds of abandon, he might, you know, the overload could be significant here, right? Stony silence out of the board's not going to cut anything. Um, unexpectedly absence is a slow moment. Um, I'm just not sure what he can do. Um, a, a Supreme Verdict would be would have been really good here. So we're going to stifle the go search trigger. So, nice play on Mark. You know, we're going to do what we can. We're going to stifle the trigger. The land dies, but he's not going to get to go search. There's two triggers on the stack. He chooses the one he stifles and stops him from fetching up something that's just going to cause even further problems. Like a retrofit or foundry or something like that. Got to play a planes. Swing for a lot. One, two, three, four. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six. Swing for six. A uh, bunch of the ground and then two in the sky. So I assume we block the batter skull so he doesn't gain life at least. Take eight and go to seven. No supreme verdict that could come back from this. <laughs> um, if he has a dress down in hand, that could be interesting, right? But even that's just gonna cut, not do too much. Mark's tanking here quite a bit, and understandably so. Oh, man. 
I don't think this one's just... I don't think this one's got a chance for Mark. I have been wrong before. I didn't think the last one looked good for him. And uh, he pulled that off. Uh, but this one's definitely not looking good for the host. Let's see what we got here, right? Stony Silence is going to stop returning Batter Skull to hand and equipping the Batter Skull. So the Stony seems okay. Uh, it shuts off the Crypt. Um, but there's still a lot of damage incoming that just... I mean, this time he's got lethal incoming with the attack. So I don't... Does he have a removal in hand? It's instant speed. Um, unexpectedly absent doesn't cut it. And, yeah, and it doesn't matter. It's game. And Adam takes that one down. Uh, Mark played a heck of a game, too, but there, there was just no coming back from that one. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you on the next one.